A pregnant woman in Texas is now suing after she was given a ticket for driving in the carpool lane. Yeah, I told you about this story yesterday. Fox High legal expert Wendy Patrick is joining us live to break down the claim. Wendy, good morning. Always good seeing you. Good morning. It's an interesting story this morning. It is. We talked about this yesterday uh, on the morning show. So for anybody that may have missed it, what exactly happened and the case now? What are the circumstances? Well, you had a woman that was stopped uh, driving solo, therein lies the rub, in the, the HOV lane. Um, and remember, what does HOV stand for? High Occupancy Vehicle. So when she was stopped at a checkpoint, you know, the police officer went up to the window and said, basically, where are the other occupants? She pointed at her, her abdomen and said, right here, my baby girl is right here. Because, of course, we all know that now we're talking about, um, at least in many of the conservative states, including Texas, where this happened, that a, a fetus is a person. Now, that's in the Texas Penal Code, but it's not in the Texas Transportation Code. So she ended up getting a ticket, which she is going to fight. Let's talk about that because the law in Texas is what it is. We've seen a lot of changes after uh, the reversal of Roe versus Wade. So when you take the penal code that says one thing and you take the, the, the transportation traffic code laws that say another thing, where do you see this case going? Because does it really start off by just her going to court and fighting a, a, a traffic ticket and then it kind of goes from there? Not completely, and you both will remember this from the time you spent in law school, is this is the law of unintended consequences. Mm. You have different terminology that mean different things in different contexts. And by the way, she's due next week, so she's either going to be in a courtroom or the delivery room. <laughs> but either way, this is one example of the many different nuances that have come from the reversal of Roe versus Wade. Um, people are talking about, well, our frozen embryos, if those are people, do we have lawyers that might represent them and their interests? Um, an interesting thing in this particular case is she says, you know, um, she gave some statements about why she was in the HOV lane and they weren't all about thinking that there were two people in the car. But be that as it may, if we're going to expand that definition, we're going to have to take a look at the other different codes that talk about persons, people, and decide if it makes sense, given the purpose and the policy behind different types of law, to expand that definition. Wendy, does she have a valid case according to the law? I think we've all learned that uh, laws change things. You, you need to follow the law at the end of the day. Based on Texas law right now, would she have a valid case? But remember, we're looking at whether or not those laws are intended for the ways in which they're used. So does a fetus count as a person and a passenger ah. for traffic control purposes? Was that fetus taking up a seat in the car? that would have allowed her to be in the HOV lane, and obviously not yet. <laughs> One of the things the officer said at the scene, you know, no doubt just confounded by this situation, he said, well, I think it means two persons outside of the body. So, you know, there's court next week. How would you like to be the judge that's deciding this hmm. case of first impression, who's no doubt having research done in the interim, because other states are watching this as well, and you have to have to really talk about, is that the reason that high occupancy vehicle laws were established to count a fetus as a person, even though legally it is, and you know, um, morally it is, according to many people, including people on both sides of the political spectrum. So um, I, for one, am going to be following this case, uh, Shali and Raul, and I'm sure we'll be talking about it again. I, I was curious because you know you brought up like a hundred different little questions. This is what people do with the law. There's a little loophole number one. There's loophole number three thousand. You can jump through this, but what about that? If not this and that. So my question. Does this case have the potential to get to the Supreme Court because of all those little details? Can it eventually morph into something that would go there? Well, the, the little details will in and of themselves spurn different types of litigation, but it's more likely instead of litigation, we'll see legislation. Mm. In other words, we'll see those loopholes being closed to make it very clear. And, you know, this case could be the one that makes that type of case law that, you know, yeah. uh, you, carpool lanes weren't intended to accommodate the unborn. They were intended to uh, accommodate traffic flow and intended to accommodate clogged freeways. So when you look at the purpose behind source of different kinds of laws, when you do have a large scale blockbuster reversal, like the Dobbs case, other cases in lower courts are going to have to get in line and then revise mm. and update so, yeah. the way in which the law has evolved.
I'm telling you, I mean, we could talk for two hours about, well, technically this, but technically that. But this said right. that, and the wording said that. Uh, th this is why I left law school. Uh, Wendy. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you very oh, much. You said if I was your professor, you would have stayed, though, remember? Yeah. Oh, no, those books, uh, they were this big, Civ Pro, and uh, no, thank you. Uh, I leave it to you, the expert. Wendy Patrick, thanks again.